Hi there, I'm Katie Morton. I'm an intuitive and an energy healer. And I'm Jennifer Palmer. I'm the owner of Nourishing Journey and an intuitive and energy healer myself. Oh my gosh, we have something in common. <laughs> and today, we're going to talk about spiritual awakening. Ugh. Because we also have that in common. Yes, it's, it's an time. amazing, an amazing thing, but it's also challenging. It's a lot of work, mm -hmm. but it's an amazing thing to work with. It's it's important. It's important work. It's what we're here for. It is. So shall we proceed? I think we shall. All right, All right. you guys ready? All right. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> Awakening explained. You're not crazy. Well, you might be crazy, but <laughs> just, it doesn't. Here's the thing. That's not how we. <laughs> <laughs> it might be when, crazy. When we have a spiritual <laughs> awakening, a lot of times people think that they're crazy or yeah. they know they're not crazy. The experience is very real to them, but they're afraid to talk to others around them because they might think they're crazy, which is a legit fear, by the way. Yeah. So, you know. We've known people who have been hospitalized, been hospitalized because they had a spiritual awakening, friends and family were concerned about them and didn't believe what they were going through. And so, um, but just know, you're also not alone. <laughs> it's called no. the great awakening. Yes. It's happening to many, many people all around the world. So people well, are catching up. They are. And it's important. It's, it's like we said, it's what we're here for. We're here to realize and learn that we are so much more than this meat suit. <laughs> <laughs> and that there's a lot of depth to us and multidimensional aspects of us. You know, we're not just here in this physical time and space. We're all over the freaking place. Well, you might have heard the term, you're not a human having a spiritual experience. You're basically a soul dumped in a meat suit placed <laughs> on a planet. Is that the saying? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. So deal. So deal. Just deal with it. Yeah, so deal with it. So it's also, it's spiritual, not religious. So somebody who's raised in a, a religious environment mm -hmm. might start to get a little bit confused about the rules and the dogma and the way that they've been conditioned uh, when, as, as children or within their family environment or even as adults within their church. Um, there's a lot of material floating around out there that's religious <laughs> dogma yeah. that's saying you shouldn't be connecting with spirits or God directly and that you need clergy or somebody who's been ordained by who? Other humans to be your point person. And so they can be sort of fearful or guilty or feel guilty that they're doing something wrong in having a spiritual awakening and having direct contact in these experiences. And this is our divine right. We have every right to go within and access who we truly are, and we have every right to explore that. And no one ever talks about it. And I think that's where the real disservice is, because then that's when people get in trouble, because they start trying to explore it, but they don't really understand how. And we'll get to that. But there are, there are methods and ways to awaken. <laughs> And it's that process of awakening. There are ways to do it where you can do it safely and in a way that's in alignment with who you are and not necessarily just a bunch of rules that have been handed to you. Truth. So, yeah. And in becoming spiritual is not a religious act. And being religious doesn't mean you're spiritual. Both are beautiful. Both can be amazing. There are a lot of amazing religions out there. So we're not saying yeah, not, not dump your religion. religion. Right. But what we're saying is, is the religious teachings aren't necessarily where the answers are. Right. They might have some, some truths or partial yeah. truths, and in some cases, untruths. And it's about discernment and knowing what's true for you and not being afraid to own it. Experiential, not learned. Yeah, which brings us, you know, that kind of goes hand in hand with the spiritual, not religious. A lot of times with the religious teachings, you're just asked to have blind faith with what it's telling you. When you have an experience, you're actually having, you're seeing or you're feeling, it feels very real to you. And yeah. so it takes you beyond blind faith and into a 
oh, okay, this is actually real. I'm experiencing it. And that can be why people assume you're crazy because they didn't experience it. And they think, well, if I didn't experience it, it just must not be real. I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've come home and tried to tell my husband about some crazy experience I had doing energy healing on somebody. And he'd be like, hmm, so what's for dinner? <laughs> hmm, okay, sure, honey. Anyway, back to reality, you know? Yeah, so it's it's interesting because if you don't experience it, you just you can't you, you it, can't connect with it. And a lot of times yeah. when you're the one having the experience, it's not possible to put it into words. True. It, and so that you cannot possibly effectively communicate your experience to other people, which is why they say Okay. <laughs> What's for dinner? <laughs> What's for dinner? So, you know, having compassion for those people who do, they, they can't understand. And so don't get frustrated with them, but also maybe don't try to necessarily convince them. It's not your job to convince them of your experience. Yeah. True. Yeah. And it can, you know, well, it can happen slowly or quickly. Like we've certainly seen people where they're like, why can't this open up for me? Mm -hmm. I get a vision once in a while, or I feel a little bit of energy, but I want to hear my guides. I want to see the angels. I want all these things. Well, that's sometimes how you start getting called crazy, just so you know. If you open too quickly and you're not able to handle it, then that becomes a problem. Yeah, you don't want to blow a gasket. So here's the thing. <laughs> it can happen slowly and then quickly and then slowly again. It's yeah. not necessarily all one or the other. Uh, some people it's just a slow unfolding throughout their life. Some people just, they just blow wide open and then they need a lot of help uh, with other people who have been through it who can help them navigate it. And that, no matter how or, or where you experience your spiritual <laughs> awakening, it's always good to have help to go through it. It's a difficult thing to go through alone, whether it's slow or fast. Very true. Yeah. And that brings us to, it's a continual unfolding, not a singular event. A lot of people think, oh, I'll just meditate hard enough and at some point I'm just going to have some mystical, magical experience that might happen, but then you might, a few weeks later, feel like I'm back to ground zero. It might be as if that thing never happened and you'll have a memory of it, but the lasting bliss or spiritual high might have worn off. And then you're thinking, wait, I was like the Buddha a couple of weeks ago, and now I'm <laughs> pissed off at Johnny Lunchbox for cutting me in line at the grocery store. And you're like, what happened? I'm supposed to be cool, not spiritual. <laughs> like I like to say when I get triggered, I'm so evolved, <laughs> so spiritually advanced. <laughs> but it's a continual, <laughs> gradual unfolding. If you do the work, and we'll talk about what that work is in a moment, but it's about consciousness work and yeah. not letting yourself backslide because you can backslide. You can have a you will. spiritual awakening. Yeah, you, you will. will backslide. <laughs> Let's put it that way. You're not perfect. Yeah. And you won't be. <laughs> yeah. Just so that's because. okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the experiences, there's different things that a lot of people say they start to notice when the awakening starts. Whether it happens quickly or slowly, there are things that are, you're gonna start seeing and paying attention to, such as the synchronicities and signs. That's often how it starts. Seeing the same numbers all over the place, or feathers, um, feathers or an animal. Or running into people, or yeah, you know, the thinking phone, of someone thinking, and then they, they call, call you. you. Yeah. yeah, those types Finishing of things. Finishing each other's writing. sentences, which I've noticed we've been doing. <laughs> it's almost like we're married or something. I know, oh my god. <laughs> We are very close. We are. <laughs> but we're not married. <laughs> not yet. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Like, we'll oh. see. <laughs> um, but then also, you know, then feeling energies and emotions. A lot of people come to us and they say, how do you handle the emotions that you experience when you go into a store or when you're around other people and you pick up all of that stuff? All that energy. Yeah. And that's most often, I feel like, when we have people come in here to Nourishing Journey and they're struggling with a spiritual awakening, they don't know how to manage the energy because 
not everybody has really squeaky clean, beautiful energy, and so that can be a pretty tough one. Well, and to be honest, they come to places like Nourishing Journey because they're on the path and they're doing the healing and they're releasing things. Mm -hmm. And so the other people who are sensitive around them, they're all like, oh, take your energy back. <laughs> yeah. you know? No, they don't. This is actually a very warm, welcoming it place. Is. and. <laughs> But they we, might be thinking it and they won't say it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but there is there is that experience where where I've even gotten into the habit of saying, okay, we're opening this vortex and all the energies that are being released, we're all going to help them go to the vortex. Mm -hmm. And it's a group effort, you know, so we're all helping each other. But Well, and it's about learning a vortex, scooping the energy up. What? You have to learn <laughs> how to manage the energy. Yeah. And so that's why it's really good to have help from people who are experienced uh, energy healers or spiritual teachers or what have you who can help you operate because a lot of times people just want to become recluses and not deal with other people's energy. And that's yeah. uh, not the point. The point is to learn how to function in society as a spiritually awake person who can feel other people's energy and emotions. And do your mission here. You can't yeah. do your mission if you can't go out and be and around people. Being around other like-minded people can help you figure out what your mission is if you don't know. Yeah. Because once you have a spiritual awakening, pretty imperative to get on that, figuring out what your mission is doing it even through the roller coaster yeah especially because of the it. roller coaster yeah. because it's going to help you get through it and it helps everybody else around you too mm -hmm. all right so the feeling and the feeling of the emotions and energies you might feel like I, a lot of people say they feel on their crown chakra like what feels like ants crawling on their head sounds gross it actually it feels kind of fun okay it really does but that's <laughs> that's your crown chakra um, also, sometimes your guides might try to connect with you, and a lot of times mine, when I first started awakening, would tingle my, my crown chakra, like, like the back of it or the front of it, depending on who it was. You'll feel twitching. You might feel twitching. Like pressing or little pains in the body. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't discount any sensations because it's usually, we think, energetic, spiritual. A lot of times people <laughs> will just write off whatever mm -hmm. feelings they have in their body any little pokes or pains and just mm -hmm. think oh I don't know it's just I had eye twitches for years mm -hmm. and then I read somewhere that someone said it was their guides trying to get a hold of them and so I was like okay are they my guides and I started trying to connect and the eye twitching stopped now every single time I get a twitch in my body I know it's my guides I connect I get the message and then it stops and if I don't connect to get the message they which harder and harder and harder. They're like, Jennifer, Jennifer. I'm like, okay, what do you need? <laughs> and then it stops and they give me the message and then I'm good. But yeah, they, they're really direct. Mm -hmm. You just remind me of last night when I was like, okay, just one more YouTube video. And they're like, come on! <laughs> <laughs> to bed, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and then you might also start seeing things. Um, seeing visions or even spirits or things like that. Uh, I know sometimes some of the first things that people experience might be seeing a spirit or something. But. Or seeing colors when they mm -hmm. close their eyes. and uh, Or seeing, yeah, visions, like, it's sort of like an imagining, like an, a dream sort of thing in the mind's eye. And you might just discard it like, uh, like I don't know what that was. Tune in when you see those pictures come into your head because that could have been a spiritual vision. And I, I think less often people actually see physical spirits. Um, although I did just have a client come in last week who saw like a, a shadow person in her kitchen. So if that can happen, it could does. Be, yeah. It does. Yeah. And you can also hear beings. So mm -hmm. it could he it could sound sort of like your inner voice. Like you know when you think, you know, thinking thoughts. It could feel like that, but you're. Not, you, you know it's not quite you. It might not be the vocabulary that you use. The voice might sound a little different than your own, but you can actually hear things. And again, less often, people can hear it externally. And I usually like to say, you know, so many people want to hear their guides, but that is one of those things where if you're not prepared and not ready to handle it and ground the energies and, and ground yourself, that's one of those things that you'll start feeling like maybe you're going crazy because you'll hear things. You'll hear voices, and if you're not in the way to manage and handle the energies, which we'll talk about. Yeah. If you're not managing the crowd, it can be a negative. Yeah. It can, can be not be. a good thing. So, can be. so shall we talk about that? Yes, we shall.
managing the energies. Spiritual empowerment. That's a ter so. All right. Let's say that you're having these spiritual experiences. A lot of times, people don't know that they should take control over what they're connecting with. At the beginning, it just seems really exciting and you just want to open up and, and connect with whoever walks in the door. But much like walking down a city street, you got to be careful with who you let in and, and who you yeah. connect with. And so it's we always like to connect with spirits who are on the positive path of ascension in service to other selves. Honoring the law of one and the God of all gods. Right we up. say that every time. <laughs> we do every time. It sounds really long and convoluted, but it's important because you don't want something to connect with you that's on the negative end of things. Yeah. And it's also mm -hmm. important to just make rules about when and where they can connect with you. At the beginning, a lot of times they'll wake you up in the middle of the night because that's when they can get your attention. But if sleep is important to you, you might uh, set a rule <laughs> about that. It's important to just have your parameters around who and what you're connecting with. Um, and also it's about, and in any of this, and we're gonna get more into the work you gotta do, but it's about coming to it from an empowered place and realizing that you have free will and a lot of control in this scenario, as opposed to just being like, oh, I'm having an awakening, <laughs> it's happening to me and I and can't. we've seen that. Yeah, and a they, lot. Mm -hmm, where people just like their free will goes out the window, and they think they're just at the mercy mm -hmm. of invisible spirits, and that's not the. And that every in spirit that comes, every spirit that comes through, is there for their highest good. Which is not true. It's not. And we have to use discernment mm -hmm. and and use that power of decisiveness about who and what we're gonna connect with. And, and then have fun. And then have a good time. Yeah. Party so, on. Yeah. Crowds. Crowds. Really, oh, so that's the other thing. Dealing with the crowds. Dealing with crowds during a spiritual awakening can be difficult because with people come lots of spirits, lots of energy, and it can feel really draining or unpleasant. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't be like at a party and be like, you know what, hold on, you need a clearing because your energy well, is like all over the place. It depends on what kind of party. If it's a nourishing journey, you probably could. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, it might be a little weird. <laughs> your energy is all over the place. Real in, lady. <laughs> Keep your emotions to yourself, right? <laughs> Good times. I have had the experience where somebody was emotional. I don't know who it was. And then somebody thought it was me. And they're like, are you okay? I'm feeling a lot of emotion. And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. It was kind of confusing. Anyway. <laughs> And then later, I figured out who it was. Anyway, whatever. Well, and what's funny, too, is sometimes, because we're such good friends, I might be feeling something and maybe repressing it because i got a business to run. And Katie's like, hey, hey what's going on over hey there? Hey, lady, go feel your feels. <laughs> I don't, I don't like, want to feel it. it. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> so same process. Just don't take on anybody else's stuff. <laughs> yeah. Relationships. That's yeah. That's the other thing. Uh, sometimes we can be feeling somebody else's feelings and not realize it. And then all of a sudden, we're thinking, gosh, I, I feel so lonely or whatever. And even if that might not be a normal problem for you, yeah. that, that, that should be a little bit of a red flag of uh, maybe this isn't mine. <laughs> And drawing those energetic boundaries because everybody's responsible for their own feelings and processing their own emotions. So what I used to do was just be like, oh, I'll just transmute it. And then I started doing that for like seven different people. And eventually you're like, I, I can't. Too I, much. I couldn't keep doing it. But I didn't realize I was doing it. It was kind of a subconscious thing. And when I realized I was trying to fix everybody else's feelings, I had to finally just give that up and draw stronger energetic boundaries. There have been quite a few times I've felt, from students of mine especially, or people I work with, where I suddenly get a bout of anxiety and I don't know where it's coming from. And I know it's not mine because I wasn't feeling anxious about anything. And like a half hour later I get an email or a text about something they're worried about. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then I'm like, oh, that's who it is. <laughs> Yeah. And then as soon as I figure it out, it's, it goes away, I guess, because I figured it out. But 
and then I help them and yeah I'm looking at you funny because I just had that experience this morning where I felt someone felt like it was like grief and a loss of love and I was like mm. who is that and then I got a text like an hour later <laughs> and I was like oh, oh. <laughs> So yeah, the more in tune you get with the energies, the more you awaken, the more you feel from all around you, because we are one. And the more awakening that happens, the more connected you, you become to everyone else as well. So managing those energies, I mean, that, that's a big topic. There are a lot of things we could say about that, and we'd probably be here for a couple hours. Um, yeah, but that's a different podcast. <laughs> and probably, maybe a few. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Learning how to have appropriate boundaries, um, and and that goes for not just your relationships. I mean, I think a lot of times all of this helps people who are spiritually awakening to develop proper boundaries, not just energetically, but also in relationships. So important, mm -hmm. so, so important. Um, because a lot of what you experience energetically, it's pointing you to things you need to work on in your 3D life as well. Mm -hmm. So, in your intervals. Absolutely. Shall we talk about that? Let's do. Okay. Ascension Your work. work. Yes. So first, what's Ascension? If you think of Ascended Masters, Jesus, mm -hmm. Buddha, and there are thousands, probably millions of Ascended Masters that we don't, they're, they're nameless. We don't know who they are, but they're spirits who have done the work in the 3D. They don't need to incarnate in a body anymore. They've ascended. Um, so what's the process for that, for going up that ascension spiral and learning all the lessons that we need to learn? Know thyself. I think that might be the first rule of, not Fight Club, but the law of one. <laughs> it's learning to know, you know, learn, getting to know your own mind, which you can do via meditation, observing your thoughts, taking that witness standpoint, as opposed to identifying with like, oh, everything I think, and mm -hmm. thinking that all your thoughts are the truth. Instead, getting a higher perspective uh, on that and seeing that, oh, I have these certain tendencies. I have these certain wounds and triggers and upsets. I tend to do these things. Uh, and then that way, if you do find yourself upset or triggered, you can go, oh, this is that thing that I have, as opposed to being like, I'm upset, you upset me, it's your fault. Yeah. It's more about knowing yourself <clears throat> first. And I heard a good, I love, uh, Russell Brand has a great podcast, yeah. and this morning I heard on his podcast somebody say, if it's, histor if it's hysterical, it's historical. And what that means is, mm. if it gets you all riled up emotionally, it's connected to something that happened to you in your past, like childhood trauma, or that you, you have some past wound, and in the word we do, it could be a past life wound, it could be in the very far distant past, and then when you have some sort of, it could be a benign interaction with somebody, but it gets you triggered and you immediately think, oh, they're mm -hmm. trying to take advantage of me or this or that. It could be just based on some historical thing that you've already been yeah. through. But you got to seek the truth. Yeah. So to seek the truth, you definitely need to know who you are. You need to accept the fact that no, you're not always wrong, but you're also not always right. And the more wounds you have, the, the, more, distorted the more distorted your ideas probably are. are. Yeah. And uh, the more work you have to do. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think when I, when I think of the ascension spiral, you know, I think of, it's, it's a mixture of kind of like, hmm, there's something wrong in the way I'm seeing things here. Hmm, what is the truth? Hmm. I really have to be honest with myself, which is next, be in integrity. And then you need to heal it, and then you just keep doing it. And then you, you just keep spiraling up in this work. Um, but it's, even yeah. though it's, I, we use the word work. It is work. It, it is effort. And it's, it takes commitment. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard sometimes. But at the same time, it's so very rewarding. It's the most rewarding thing. I've ever focused on in my life is my ascension. Yeah, well, I mean, and once you begin this work, there's just, there's no other way. You can't, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll just be so far out of integrity. But I've, I've seen this happen, and I think the biggest block to ascension is when somebody doesn't want to admit that they could be wrong or flawed. Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest block. If they're really attached to blaming other people for their upsets as opposed to 
seeking the truth. Seeking the truth is about, look, there is no absolute truth. I have a perspective, you have a perspective, and then there's something somewhere out there that's similar to the, the truth, and it's somewhere in between mm -hmm. what's actually going on. And so once you dedicate yourself to not being right, not having to look good all the time, and instead learning to just be humble and look for the truth in the matter every chance you get, you're, you can't stop doing that once you see it. You can't yeah. unsee it. And then it gets really hard to keep fooling yourself, which mm -hmm. is a good thing. Um, that said, you have to stay really high level and try to do what's right. Because people, people are people, and <laughs> if you're up against somebody who they need to win, they need to be right, sometimes if you go to them and you are, are humble and truth-seeking, they're going to be like, awesome, I am going to smash your head in. And so you have to do what's right, and sometimes that might be a little self-protective. So it can get tricky. It can get mm -hmm. really tricky in what the right thing to do is. And back to the empowerment piece, it's about not being a doormat. A lot of, uh, a big mistake I see people early in the process make is that they realize sp spirits are watching. Like not mm -hmm. any thought you have goes unrecorded basically. And so they always wanna do the right mm -hmm. thing once you realize there's being a light being shown in on your innards <laughs> you're not hiding anything from anybody so they want to do what's right but then they can actually put themselves in really compromised weak positions mm -hmm. so doing what's right isn't always the obvious thing it can be really challenging to figure out what that is to to stay in integrity to be uh, but to be spiritually strong mm -hmm. and, and not weak and not just letting people trample you either yeah, exactly. So <clears throat> there is a bit of a pendulum swing there where you're you're too strong, <laughs> back off, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. And then you come back to, oh, but I just want to be a loving person. Oh, my my feelings don't matter here. My, yeah, my I just want them matter. to be happy. Um, and neither is healthy. So we we like to say rise above it. You know, if what someone is doing is not good for you. It's not about being selfish. It's about caring for yourself. We still need to care for who we are and our temple and our time here. You know, we're not here to become more wounded or to take on people's karma or to just deal with it. Sometimes you need to shove their karma back in their face and be like, hmm, no, th this is kind of what you need to look at right here. And I, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to take this for you. Um, sometimes it's your own karma that needs to get shoved back in your face. I mean, it is. And, and learning, you know, to really just question it and, and to be detached from the idea that you're a bad person if you find that you've been seeing something incorrectly or um, you've had some growth to do or something deeper to understand or some new revelation is coming along. Because that's a part of your work. It's what we're here to do. And that's the hard part a lot of times because it really is easy to be like, yeah, that's, that's yours. <laughs> and I'll just, I'll be over here. But if you can get to a point where you're just open, like, well, if I am doing something wrong, not being a doormat, but if I am doing something, then, all right, universe, God, help me see what that is so that I can correct it within myself. And just being loving of yourself in your perfections and imperfections you know, and then also being loving towards others for their perfections and imperfections. And, but yet still having those, if someone's harmful and hurtful, it doesn't matter how much you care for them or how much you intend well for them, it doesn't mean it's okay for them to keep treating you like that when they've not done their work, right? Preach, sister. Yeah, yeah, man. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, there's so much more to all of this, of course, but... Of course, but in a nutshell, that's the awakening and ascension process and work and why it's continual and why it's ongoing. Repeat. You just got to yes. keep going through it. Wash, rinse, repeat. Mm -hmm. But it's very well worth it. Indeed. Indeed. And so 
I'll leave you with the image of an octopus. As you're walking down the street, sometimes you might get smashed in the face with an octopus. This is a problem. It has a lot of tentacles. It's wrapped around your face. You're like, oh my God, I can't see, can't breathe. What's happening? Your job is to make calamari. I know it's an octopus, not a squid. Whatever. Stick, stick with me here. You chop it up and you distill out those nuggets, the golden fried delicious calamari nuggets of wisdom, and you rise up the ascension path. And just when you think, I'm gold, I've arrived, another octopus is gonna land on your face. Yeah, sometimes bigger than the last one. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> it's, did that make sense? It's totally, but you're making me want sushi now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I want some sushi. That sounds good. It does. Um, but don't be afraid of it. Don't be in fear of it. Embrace it. The, the less resistance you have, the quicker you move through it, and the easier, no matter how big the octopus is, the, the more you struggle, the more it's going to wrap itself around you. So you just got to gently peel it away and examine it before you mm -hmm. dice it. Yum. Mm, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but then anyway. if you're in service to other people, you can also serve them delicious nuggets of wisdom. And show them how you did it. <laughs> so sh show them how you came through a similar problem. And ask for some soy sauce. Or marinara, whatever you're in the mood for. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for yes. watching. Yes. Please thank you. share, like, subscribe, come see us. We do many events here at Nourishing Journey in Columbia. We do have a lot of fun, even with our energies. True. Columbia, Maryland. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the energies here are beautiful. People do comment all the time mm -hmm. on how beautiful and, and cleansed the energies are. So don't don't fear it. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we have those vortexes going. And we're we like, work it. get it out. <laughs> clean. <laughs> Bring your dirty chakras. We'll clean them. Yeah. Right on. Right. All, all right. right. Again. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.